Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview, my name is Joseph. So Nikola Tesla may have been one of the most fascinating scientists and brilliant visionaries in our most recent history. I mean, for those of you who are familiar with his work, he was an absolute genius, the likes of which humanity rarely sees. He was a man who could speak eight languages and had more than 700 patents around the world. Our radio remotes, lasers, and the alternating current necessary for cell phones, computers, and all other technological things are all of his inventions. This is only a fraction of what he invented and contributed to society. He claimed to even crack the code to tapping into infinite free energy. Though his work and claims are controversial to some, I believe that most geniuses dwell on a plane that's above the average person, and so they're usually misunderstood and mocked. In some interviews, this pioneer of the electrical world painted a picture of the future that completely baffles us today. The accuracy of his predictions are spot on. So in today's video, we're going to explore a few of Tesla's visionary predictions. Many people humorously suggest that Tesla may have been a time traveler. With great accuracy, he successfully predicted the smartphone technology. Tesla's prediction about the smartphone came in 1926. He said, when wireless is perfectly applied, the whole earth will be converted into a huge brain, which in fact it is, all things being particles of a real and rhythmic whole. We shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. Not only this, but through television and telephony, we shall see and hear one another as perfectly as though we were face to face, despite the intervening distance of thousands of miles. And the instruments through which we shall be able to do all of this will fit in our vest pockets. I mean, it's pretty hard not to picture the modern cell phone when you hear these words. If we compare this very specific prediction with our actual situation, we can see once again just how far ahead Nikola Tesla was. Not only did he make precise predictions about the future of communication, he even inadvertently predicted the arrival of Apple's real-time calling system. Nikola Tesla directly mentioned the idea of being able to talk to people face to face. If you proposed this idea to someone who lived just 30 or 40 years ago, they would have thought that you had lost your sense. But Tesla accurately predicted the arrival of this technology nearly 100 years before it was actually released to the public. Anyone familiar with the Star Wars trilogy knows that in George Lucas's space tale, there's no weapon more powerful than the gigantic Death Star, a massive space station outfitted with incredibly destructive super lasers that could even destroy entire planets. Many people say that this kind of death ray weapon can only appear in science fiction, and that Tesla's prediction about it was never fully realized. But from the information we have compiled, I think Tesla may have actually already made this death rate in 1937. Let's take a look at this article published by Tesla on May 16, 1935. It introduces this laser weapon. At that time, it wasn't called the death ray, but it must have been a prototype of the death ray. He called it the new art of projecting concentrated non-dispersive energy through natural media, which is in fact what we know as a death ray today. Tesla also drew the design diagram of his device and other parts of the design and gave many calculation formulas at the bottom of the article. So we have good reason to believe that Tesla had already made a prototype of this vision death ray in 1935, or at least thought of it. Next, let me show you the video of the laser weapon made by the US military. This long telescope-like thing is the transmitter that emits a laser beam. In the first demonstration, it hits a stationary target, which immediately explodes. This result is very similar to the description Tesla gave. He said that it only takes a moment to hit something within 200 miles with such a device. In the second demonstration, the device is aimed to hit a moving target. It was almost like playing a game. The operator actually held something like a gamepad, which is pretty interesting. After aiming the device, the target on the ship was hit, while the rest of the target surrounding essentially went unscathed. The third demonstration involved hitting a plane. Tesla also once said in an interview that when this death ray weapon would be unveiled, many planes around it would all be shot down at once. Tesla also mentioned an anti-electromagnetic machine, which many people refer to as a flying saucer. Here's Tesla's description of the machine. The first is that he said his flying machine will have neither wings nor propellers. The second point is that he says it can remain absolutely stationary in the air, even in the wind, for great lengths of time. 
These two points he brought up remind me of two things. The first is an ion wind propelled aircraft recently developed by MIT. This aircraft seems to have no propeller and because it has no engine or propeller, the thrust it relies on is what's called ion wind. Although this aircraft is still in its experimental research stage, this technology is indeed possible because after all, it gets rid of the aircraft engine, switching to an electric energy source, which is ultimately clean energy. But Tesla mentioned that his machine could be stationary in the air. It's still difficult for this ion wind driven aircraft to achieve this. So this reminds me of a previous video we've done on the discovery of high tech ancient ruins in Mexico. As you can see here, there is the spinning thing, which is actually genuine magnetic levitation. The magnetic levitation we often see is actually the kind produced by the principle of same poles repelling each other and opposites attracting each other. But the magnetic levitation in this video is completely different because it can truly hover completely still in the air. If it's the principle of repulsion, then the experimental device, if it were turned upside down, would ultimately fall to the ground. However, the disc in this experimental device manages to hover right where it is no matter how it's flipped about. This phenomenon is called quantum locking. To briefly introduce this principle, this quantum lock must be established under the condition that the suspended thing is a superconductor. Once this thing becomes a superconductor, the magnetic field certainly couldn't pass through it anymore. But there would still be more or less residual magnetic fluxes inside of it. To give you an idea, there are as many as 110 billion magnetic fluxes in this small disk. To put this in perspective, it's a thin piece of superconductor, yet its magnetic properties are enough to support the weight of a car. We know that the Earth is actually a magnet. If our aircraft is a superconductor and there's enough magnetic beams in it, does it mean that it can float in the air? In 1901, Tesla built the famous Wardenclyffe Tower on Long Island, New York. At the time, he wanted to use the tower to realize the super plan of a global wireless power supply so that convenient radio energy could be used all over the world without the need for a wire network. Mobile phones and electric vehicles would be able to run without stored energy, all using wireless transmission. If this were successful, the world would be completely different today. However, this was a very expensive project. So Tesla sought out financial support from the extremely wealthy financier, JP Morgan. Tesla felt that Morgan was a businessman through and through and that he just wanted to make money on this project. So instead of telling JP Morgan his real purpose, Tesla told him his tower was to study global radio communications. Later on, Morgan actually invested $150,000 in Tesla to build the Wardenclyffe Tower. Then Tesla quietly did his research there. He did a particularly good job of keeping it a secret, not allowing anyone to get close to him. Later, the nearby residents reported that they often saw 60 meter long lightning bolts floating around the top of a tower at night. And this scared them so bad that they couldn't sleep. They had no idea what on earth Tesla could be doing up there. Sadly, however, on December 12, 1901, shortly after the Wardenclyffe Tower was built, Marconi, an Italian scientist that both Edison and the steel tycoon Carnegie had invested in, successfully received the first transatlantic radio signal in Newfoundland, Canada, and it was sent from Britain. Morgan saw that global radio communication had already been invented by others, so he stopped funding Tesla's experiments. In 1903, Tesla was in financial trouble. In 1912, Tesla was $23,500 in debt. The Wardenclyffe Tower was demolished and the experimental site's equipment was confiscated by the courts. Later, Tesla took Marconi to court. He claimed that Marconi's invention was copied from his own work, since Tesla had already invented radio communication technology, but just deliberately concealed it. However, it is a pity that it was not until after Tesla's death that it was announced that Marconi lost the case. Interesting how Marconi is now remembered for radio communication. So how does Tesla's wireless power transmission device actually work? Well, let's take a look at it using Tesla's own drawings and do our best to decipher it. In the picture on the left, the long push pin like things covering the earth are the receivers and the position where the hand appears on the upper right corner is where Tesla's electrical tower is located. Tesla thought that his tower could generate a wave of energy, just as the energy transmitter in the microwave emits microwaves that bounce inside of the microwave so that all corners of the machine are filled with microwaves. Ultimately, Tesla's device was tapping into the abundant and exhaustless energy that permeates all around us 
and applying the principles of energy resonance to amplify it. In Tesla's model, the energy wave emitted by the tower can be transmitted to any corner of the Earth. So why does this energy wave resonate with the Earth? It's because the frequency of the energy wave is the same as the natural frequency of the Earth itself, which is 7.83 Hertz. The wave of this frequency is called the Schumann wave. Viewers who are interested in this topic can watch our previous video on the topic. In fact, over the years, many individuals and teams have reproduced various scaled down versions of the original Tesla coil. Although oftentimes these coils are used in spectacles or visual audio shows to display the amazing blue lightning bolts that are emitted. In these cases, the coil's full potential hasn't been realized and they haven't been able to create free energy as its original design entailed. It seems that Tesla's project is technically feasible, but it's very frustrating that it hasn't been realized because his research harmed the interest of the few while benefiting the vast majority of the public. Yet these few ultra wealthy controlled most of the world's wealth. Therefore, for Tesla, he could have become the richest man of the world had he capitalized on it. However, he personally tore up the patent for the alternating current just to benefit the public. Although he was temporarily forgotten and brushed off in his own era, he was destined to become a brilliant piece of history for the human race. Well, that's it for today. Which of this genius inventor's ideas fascinates you the most? Is there something that we missed that you'd like us to touch on more? And which of his predictions do you think will actually come true? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.